puzzle line. Puzzle line. Now, I've traveled 10,000 miles in the past 24 hours, so I've had a lot of time to reflect on this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that neither one of you has ever said the words puzzle line to me. Sir, before Mercury went operational, we ran a standard validation protocol. The works. Double sets of paired Cray supercomputers. Freaking Velociraptor machines chewing at Mercury 24 hours a day. Mercury came out unbent. Awesome, sir. It was finally a code that couldn't be broken. But there was one last thing to check out. The, um... Geek factor. Human beings will fool you sometimes, so... We thought it was important to... So we, we slipped a message in the back of a puzzle magazine, right in the middle of one of those egghead word games. We basically no, dared the amateurs to we take were sure that no one would ever call. But somebody did, sir. His name is Simon Lynch. He lives in Chicago. He is nine years old. And he has deciphered a message written in the most sophisticated code the world has ever known. In a geek's puzzle magazine. And I don't recall ever authorizing anyone to put any message into any magazine. That couldn't just happen. The kid couldn't just pop it open. Not only is he nine years old, he is handicapped. He is autistic. <laughs> yes, that explains it. So our $2 billion code is an open book to people of diminished capacity? No, 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 sir. Autism isn't synonymous with diminished capacity. Autistic people are, they're, they're shut off. But it's not unusual for an autistic person to be a savant. Oh, a savant? Yeah, look, he may not be able to actually decipher the code. It might just appear to him. Right, right, right. He, can, he didn't calculate anything. He just saw it. You know, like those stupid pictures that you see at the mall, you know, you stare at him, you stare at him, you stare at him, and then whack, all of a sudden you're looking at the Statue of Liberty. Exactly. This is not a stupid picture at the mall. This is national security. Looking at the best case scenario, let's suppose the boy is unique and he doesn't understand what he's just done. Does that solve my problem? Answer, no. Analysis, all we need now is for someone else who understands his capability to come along and my problems are increased exponentially. <laughs> Keep walking. Jeffries? Just keep walking. I wasn't sure you'd be here. Simon's read the code twice now. It's really incredible. It's also very dangerous. Who do you work for? CIA? No. Who? The Defense Department? I'm afraid you're not that lucky. I think the FBI likes to call us no such agency. Why does the NSA want a nine-year-old autistic boy? Because the human brain is still a mystery. What? Look, the Reagan administration mandated the National Security Agency to generate a new code to protect American informants working for foreign governments. So we developed the super code at a huge expense, named it Mercury. We thought it was impenetrable. You're telling me a nine-year-old kid cracked the government's super code? Look, it doesn't matter. He can read it. He might even be able to recreate it. That's why his life is in danger. The NSA is willing to have this boy killed to protect the code? We may have already tried. I think my division chief may have given orders. Look, I'm just a cryptographer, a nerd. I don't know what these people do. Maybe it's routine killing kids. Maybe my boss is an apparition. <laughs> Someone is going to go on national television and tell America that your billion-dollar uncrackable code has been cracked by a nine-year-old autistic boy. 